light. So my talk is about the cold storage engine. The engine means that uh, this is the, 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 the core part of the cold storage system. And uh, it is open source. And uh, beyond the, the, open, uh, the, the cold storage engine, there are some other business logic. Uh, and uh, they are not open source. So, so only the storage engine I can mention here. And uh, why am I? Uh, I'm the member of uh, the architecture committee of uh, Alibaba infrastructure service team. And I'm in charge of uh, uh, storage software site. And uh, also uh, in 2010, I just joined Alibaba to build the kernel team. And I'm, I was the first employee, the first engineer of the Alibaba kernel team. Yeah. And now I, I just lead the, the ARM OS team and the cold storage team. So here is the content of today's talk. What is cold storage, uh, cold data in real world and the workload characteristic? Uh, and the, 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 the cold storage system design and the topology, the motivation why we use the open source technology and the, what we contribute to open source. and. The, the, the data safety in cloud storage, what is the difference from the uh, legacy, from the traditional storage system? Okay. What is the code data in real world? This is very interesting information that on an internal storage system, we observe different access pattern unlike the existing backup or storage system. For example, the backups uh, or storage system, once there is a read access, maybe almost all the uh, backup data will be restored to online system. But from our data, we find that only no more than 5% of the data is accessed. Access means uh, delete or read. And this kind of data only be stored on our storage and then only a very small part of the data is accessed. Even, even for each read access, the requirement, they do not touch the whole data object, just only a small part of the data object. And uh, for uh, this is uh, very different, very different from the normal align storage system. Uh, this typical code data access pattern. And uh, another interesting thing is uh, latency. For normal online storage system, their latency is quite restricted, maybe maybe 100 microsecond. But for this kind of data storage, the latency is quite tolerant. It's, it's up to hours. The user they do not require very fast data response. Maybe one or two or three hours, they can get the data back. That's OK. Oops. Uh, guess what? OK. So in this case, the high performance is not the first priority. Uh, our internal custom does not require very high throughput or low latency. They don't require it about this. And this is what the typical storage system requires in most of the cases. And the uh, access latency is in our. That's OK. That's a response. That's a requirement from our internal customs. The internal customs means uh, the other engineering team who build the, the business system to serve for the end user. We, we are the infrastructure team. So we serve for our internal custom. The high durability is critical. Uh, there is no high availability requirement. So the network out of work and the power failure, even the operating system crash is accessible. 
once everything get back to work, we can find the date on the disk, that's okay. But the custom, our internal custom, require extremely low cost with the reasonable high durability. That's hard, that's very hard. Data is required to accessible for many years, even whole company life cycle. This is not only the requirement from our internal custom, also from government, because we are online training company or online, maybe some user use the cloud infrastructure for their online training, trading, trading. So we need to keep all the logs for a very long time, especially if for the financial, financial related logs, maybe they require, we have to keep this kind of information for the whole enterprise life cycle. Uh, data site increase very fast, very fast, it is especially for the internet company like us. Yeah, there is a number that on last year, 11.11 .11 shopping festival, just a single day we got a 9.3 billion in GMV just a single day. So the data increase very, very fast, it's crazy. Extreme low storage cost is critical, especially in the exabyte, exabyte data to store. If we can drop 1% of the cost, that's still a lot of money. So the challenge, the technical challenge is uh, high durability and uh, low cost, we have to achieve at the same time. Another challenge is currently we don't have our own data center. And all the data center we have to rent from third part. Also, it's not so easy for us to build our own data center. It's not so easy. So we have to face different data center with different configuration or different, uh, for example, the power supply the cooling and the, the, the space, everything. Yeah. So the cold storage hardware is required to scale from a PB to EB, depends on which kind of data center we can run. Even with the different power supply, it sounds interesting that in many cases we cannot rent the data center with the power supply we want. Yeah. So when we rent the data center, we pay the money by the power consumption. They just give our bill by the power consumption. For example, one rock, if the power supply is uh, 8,000 watt, so how, how much money? Just like this. We, we, don't, we don't pay separately for the IDC space, the, the cooling system, and the power, no. Just, they uh, just include every expense into the power supply. And the, for the cold data storage, maybe people will think of uh, tape, Tape is good, tape is good. If we can deploy very large scale tape library with automatic uh, the, the, the mechanism arm or robot, that's good. But things I mentioned, we cannot have our own standard data center. So we cannot deploy very large scale tape library. So in our calculation, we found that in our case, tip is expensive. How about Blu-ray? People may think of uh, Facebook use Blu-ray. 
but we also do some uh, evaluation. We find that currently, currently there is no very strong evidence that Blu-ray storage is very good in our case. Also, we try to find uh, some partner for Blu-ray storage. The response is not so active. So still, we, we are looking for partners from uh, industry to help us to, to verify whether Blu-ray storage is good for code data. So currently, there is no evidence, uh, evidence for us. So in our current situation, maybe the hard disk is the, the, the proper solution for us. Yeah. So this is the hardware we design for code data storage. Here you can see that there are 18 hard disks in one U box. The hard disk is uh, four terabyte or eight terabyte low performance. Low performance means they are just around uh, 5,090, uh, 5,900 RPM row per minute. And uh, in a rock, in a rock, in a single rock, we have uh, 32 U, 32 1 U boxes. Yeah. And we use a very low cost and the power consume CPU in the memory. Yeah. Currently, we use uh, Intel Atom. Maybe next year, we will move to other architecture. And the, this hardware design is called uh, Project Scorpio. Project Scorpio is the, the data center hardware standard supported by Alibaba, Baidu, and Tencent, and other internet or some kind of IT company in China. We don't have that. Uh, on the, on the rack, every four one U box, we share four big funds. So you can see there's no power supply. Yeah. The, the power is also on the rack. So here only CPU memory and the hard disk. In, for the code storage, we do not use a very large cluster topology like uh, Hadoop. No, that does not work better for us. We, we just uh, divided a lot of hard disk, a lot of storage into small group of uh, machines. We call that uh, subclusters. You can see the picture. For example, there are four racks, four racks, and we divide all the nodes into several subcluster. For example, here we have four subclusters, and the subcluster is the minimal unit for software defined storage, which means that. If we need to extend the storage, we do not add more machines to a cluster. We do not extend the cluster size. We just uh, add more subcluster. So when a subcluster is full, just uh, turn the whole cluster, the whole subcluster, into a sealed state. The sealed state means that uh, the CPU, we, CPU and the memory and other devices will turn into a low power consumption state. And uh, we will shut down the power of all the hard disk. By this design, any single data object will only be stored within one single sub subcluster. But that's enough. 
in our case, because we, from our observation, we find that the average data object size is just around 100 gigabyte. And for each subcluster, we can support, in practice, we can support the object size to one to four terabyte, depends on the hard disk size. And uh, from the data structure design, uh, the maximum size of the single data, uh, data object is uh, 16 terabyte. So that's enough, that's enough. And we use the very simple software defined the storage. Subcluster is a distributed storage cluster as a minimal software storage unit. And it's just adding more subclusters when we extend the storage capability, capacity. No matter how large a code storage system will be, we only focus on a single subcluster for the communication, for the stability, for the scalability. So by this design, we do not challenge the age of technology. Just a very small cluster, it should be stable. No matter how large the, 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 the whole storage system is. Yeah, small storage cluster means uh, simple. Simple means uh, reliable and uh, stable in large scale system. We don't want to spend too much time to reproduce some bugs. What's the, what's the software stack? I, I will mention later. Okay. Here I just introduced the design and uh, later I will mention the, the very brief implementation and uh, some uh, specific points we think about just for code storage. This is how we deploy the whole system. Just imagine this is one rock, and each rock there are 32 boxes. We just imagine in a data center, we have uh, this number of rocks. Because we use subcluster. So the whole rock, only a small amount of machines are in active state. I mark it with the red color. For other machines, they are full of data. We just turn the storage devices into sealed state. So they are in the low car power consumption state, just like this. And for the green one, they are free servers. They are empty and are ready to be used to, to, to store the data. So no matter how large the whole system is, only a very small group of the server is active. They are active for, for data writing. Why we can do this is because in the first page I mentioned, only a very small amount of data is accessed. Most of the operation is writing. So by this design, the data center, most of the time, the data center is very quiet and the code because only a, a very small group of servers are working. Now, I just began the software part. The why we use open source technology? Based on the design I introduced before, we just want to new, we just want need some uh, distributed storage to build the subcluster. For the subcluster, we need some very simple function. The first is simplicity. 
we just want a very, very simple software stack. Very simple. Because the, the scalability of the, the whole cluster is very small. It's no more than 32 nodes. So we don't need, we don't need the, the storage system designed for a huge amount of servers. Just the simplicity. And the simplicity means that when new people join a team, they can understand the, the, the system very fast and help us to, to man, maintain the system. Because we are not a software development company. We are an internet company. And we need the consistent hashing. Consistent hashing, we use that to distribute the data block among the different servers. In this case, we don't need a master node to the cluster. And we use the erasure code. With erasure code, we can decrease the data replication with a higher durability. I will introduce later for the advantage of erasure code. And we need a RESTful API. RESTful API is just a, some uh, API standard for HTTP protocol. With this, we can test the system very easy, and we can provide the, the, the compatible interface to other component, other up layer component of the whole storage system. So other than developing from scratch, it is more efficient to start from a simple open source project. And uh, we, we, we just do a lot of research to check different open source storage system. And finally, we choose a system called uh, Shipdog. Does anyone know Shipdog project? Yeah, that's, that's a very young, that's a very young project, just for maybe four or five years. It's, this project is originally designed for virtualization storage, store the, the, the virtual machine image among the network. But we, we modified this project. We modify that to the ob object storage and I use it for the code storage. And the code name of our code data storage engine is uh, Lambert. Lambert is the, the largest glacier on the Earth. Yeah. Because, uh, you know, there is the service, code storage service from Amazon named Glacier, so we don't use that word again. <laughs> This is the original topology, the original design from Shipdog. Original design, Shipdog used uh, three copies. If there is a data stored in the virtual volume and the data is duplicated in three copies and distributed on different computer. For us, it's expensive. It's expensive because we have to use three copies to make sure the durability is okay. So we turn to use erasure code. Erasure code means that for each data block, we can cut the data block into more smaller pieces. And from these smaller pieces, we use some calculation to generate more parity pieces. For example, here, this is the policy for three copies. This is the policy for four plus two erasure code. In this case, we just cut a block into four pieces and generate two more parity pieces. So we have uh, six pieces of a single data block. But comparing to the original data block size, the, the replication of the data is 
not three times. So we just occupy less hard disk space, which means lower cost. In early 2013, the Shipdog project only has a consistent Hashi storage framework. So when we start to work on the code storage, uh, since June 2013, Alibaba has been contributing engineering resources to improve Shipdog, just for code storage. Uh, this engineer, Yuan Liu, implements erasure code support with the ZFAC, ZFAC library, uh, with uh, many other Shipdog improvement. And the Robin Do implements a RESTful API just complying with the OpenStack Swift interface. So if there are software used OpenStack Swift command set to communicate with the, with the engine that works. And uh, Robin implemented the hyper volume because the original design only supports four terabyte object. Right now this data structure supports 16 Terabyte and the whole volume up to more than 600 terabyte. Yeah, and the data recovery performance improvement. I will mention later. So all general patches are back to Shipdog upstream. So because it's open source. So if people just download, download the source code from the internet, all implementation, just ex except for some uh, hard code parameter. Other, rest, other part of the source code, people can get that. The reason why some uh, hard code uh, parameter does not include in the, the source code because community, they don't want, they don't want this kind of steps. But we just contribute everything back to community. Okay, let's back to the erasure code. Just like this. For example, we cut a large data object into many four megabyte blocks. So in, in the three copies policy, we have to use 12 megabyte to store a four megabyte uh, block. But with the erasure code, for example, four plus two policy, we cut the four megabyte block into four one megabyte pieces. And we generate two more parity block with one megabyte. So we have six megabyte we have six one megabyte pieces, and from any four pieces, we can generate, we can recover the original four megabyte block. Because we have uh, two parity block, so from the six pieces, at most we can, we can lose two pieces. In this case, we can still recover the data. Yeah, that's the similar, that's the similar durability capability to the three copies, but they only occupy 1.5 times more the disk space. And uh, yeah, here is some improvement for data, for data recovery. And the original design just used a single thread. And now we use multiple threading to do the recovery. And uh, we also re optimize the recovery mode. The previous design that if a hard disk 
is broken. The sheepdog have, has to choose another hard disk on the same server. So the data have to be gathered from all rest machines into this hard, this server and this hard disk. It's very slow. It's very, very slow. And after the improvement, we just make sure every hard disk in the whole cluster join the data recovery. So we can achieve uh, four times faster for the data recovery. OK, here is the, by the way, I, I need to mention if I wreck, is Dirk over there? I don't know. Is Dirk? No, OK. <laughs> Sorry, I, uh, people just, uh, I look very similar to, yeah. I, I thought you were Dirk from Intel. Are you? OK. <laughs> OK. Why, why I mention Intel? Because Intel Open Source Technology Center help a lot, help a lot to us. They just open source a, a library called Intel Storage Acceleration Library with the BSD license and permit us to include the source code into this GPL software. With, with their help, we can get quite good performance number on the very slow Atom CPU. From our number, we, we observed that the six, more than 60% CPU consumption disappeared after used the Intel storage acceleration library. So we can use quite cheap, quite cheap low power CPU and the memory to achieve better and uh, acceptable performance result. Okay. Here is the, now I will mention some uh, specific design for cold storage. That's a uh, data safety in cold storage. For cold storage, most of time, cold storage is the last level of the whole storage stack, in, at least in internet company. So many systems in front of the cold storage system, they just put the data back, back. But in cold storage system, there is no other storage system we can put data into. So in cold storage system, there's the, the loss of data is not acceptable. We must make sure the durability is very high. For example, 10, 9, can you understand that? 99.9999%, something like that. We call it 10, 9 at least. Here is the example how we cover, cover the data. This is four rack with four subclusters. If an for example, the second subcluster, I use some uh, hard disk icon to, to display. Each one is just a, a hard disk icon. Just for show, it's not exactly the, the, the accurate number. For example, with the four plus two parameter, the ratio code parameter, we just cut a data block into four pieces and generate two more parity pieces. So we have uh, six pieces of one data block. And for any reason, a hard disk is broke. It's broken here. It's broken. In this case, we still have another other one, two, three, four, five pieces of the data block. So we can still recover the data by the initial code algorithm. So 
So we read the rest data pieces. Any four pieces of the existing five pieces and generate, recovery the data block. And then we choose another server. Maybe this one, maybe this one, maybe this one. Because there is a rule that any two pieces cannot store on a single, on an identical server. In this case, we just choose the, the same server to recover the lost pieces. We locate the lost pieces here. Because this hard disk is broken, so we just mark it as a broken in software, as a little bit. We don't change, we don't, we don't repair, we don't replace hard disk. Just the market as a isolated. That's all. In our design, if if my mathematics is correct, in five years, no hard disk replace, replacement is needed. But currently, we just run the system online for more than half a year, so that's just a, a calculation. I still need more practice data to approve, uh, to, to, to verify, to prove and verify. Yeah. So unlike, unlike the existing online storage system, we don't replace failed hard disk. Until, until what? Until a lot of hard disk are broken. Until no space to recovery, no spare space to recovery more data. We we use around. We just turn the subcluster into sealed mode. If uh, 80% of the whole hard disk space is full. And we will replace the hard disk if there are only 10% of the space can be used, which means that we can tolerate around 10% of the all hard disk fill, and then we replace that. If if the hard disk vendor's information is correct in five years, we don't need to change hard disk. Another important, important thing we need to take care of is a bit error. Maybe for the enterprise story system, people don't need to worry about bit error. But for internet company, we build everything. We build storage, we build our own switch, and uh, almost every software we can build ourselves, we just do it ourselves. So many, there are many things unreliable, in my humble opinion. So even, even in the underlying, underlying system, there is something like the checksum error, detect, error detection. I don't believe that on the upper layer, the data is correct, because there may be network error on the switch software, maybe some memory hardware error, but the operating system does not find. Maybe just someone write a bug code. So we need, we need to take care of the, the bit error. The bit error means that a block of the data just changed. Changed by some buggy hardware or software. If that happens, that's nightmare because most of the data, the very sensitive to financial. If some data changes 
I don't know what the aftermath. So end-to-end -to -end error detection is necessary. Even if underlying layer have uh, error detection functionality, we also need to verify the data correction, do it end-to-end. -end. So what we use, the method we use, I call that two-result comparison. What's that? It's a, for example, in the four plus two erasure code, if we use that, when recovering a data block, it means that the, the two, the two result comparison is used when some hard disk is, is uh, broken, and we just recover the data from network. And if we, when we're recovering a data block, we're fetching one more pieces of the data block. The originally, for the uh, classical erasure code algorithm in four plus two uh, parameters, we only need four pieces of the data. But now we just fetch one more. We fetch five pieces. So with five pieces data, <coughs> we can choose two different combination of four pieces to generate two four megabyte blocks with different four pieces data combination. And we just compare the result bit by bit with the memory CMP function. If everything is uh, identical, we think that's okay. But if there's any bit is different, we think there is some uh, data corruption. Yeah, I will mention later. Next page, next page. Ah, here. When the bit error is uh, finite, first we, we, we record uh, the data object which the corrupted data block belong to. And then we continue to do the global recovery. Because once a hard disk is broken, there are many data block belongs to many object lost. So they have to re recover many data object. We just uh, continue the global recovery. And when the global recovery accomplished, we cover the recorded data object again. And uh, in this case, the recovery policy is uh, Still very simple. We're just fetching all pieces of each data block. For example, if we have six pieces, one hard disk broken, we still have five pieces. We fetch all the five pieces data and try to generate, try to recover the data block in different combination, more than two. And then we do some voting. Yeah. And then we just compare the, the result number. Yeah. If uh, this version is more than some other version, we think this version data is correct. And then we use this version to, to regenerate the data piece and uh, store the new data piece into another location of the cluster. This is the error detection and the recovery in, in the data recovery process in case some uh, hard disk is broken. But we can also type a command to do this kind of check manually. Just a dog VDI check. Sheepdog project, sheep is the storage end, dog is a command. So we run ship daemon on each node, and we manage the ship daemons by dog command. Yeah, and uh, here is the hard disk spin down. Uh, when a subcluster is full of data, full of data means uh, 
the hard disk space is full to 80%. We just turn this subcluster into a sealed state. Sealed state means that the service processes are queued. Of course, we will flash before queued. And the file system are you mount from the operating system. And all hard disks are power off. Use the spin down command. And uh, optionally, the whole subcluster can be isolated from network because we have another separated management network from the, the IDC data network. If user has uh, the requirement to isolate the data from internet, we just operate the switch, the network switch, the router, via the management network, and the switch the whole subcluster off from the internet. This is just uh, something similar to the offline, uh, offline tape. Yes. So there's no uh, uh, There is uh, another software we call the scheduler. Scheduler do these steps. But scheduler is not open source. We can imagine that a subcluster just uh, just uh, a, a virtualized hard disk we use some other non-open source software to manage many virtualized big hard disk, that's all. And the engine, the engine just to make sure the data is uh, safe on each of the virtual, virtual uh, hard disk. By, by this method, we can make sure that uh, no extra operations on the data because they are in a sealed mode. And uh, the wearing should be much less on the hard disk because the hard disk is powered down. And uh, since we designed uh, the whole storage system into separated subcluster, so if new data put into the storage system, only a small group of the hard disk rolling. The rest of the hard disk just uh, rest, have a rest. So there is no extra hardware swe uh, swirling. But there are two open questions. We need time to prove. One is, uh, is it true? that less data access means less error or failure triggered. Is it true? We think, we believe it is true, but we still need more time to, to verify, to prove. Another is, uh, is it true that less hardware wearing means less hardware failure? It should be true, but also I need to more verification in practice. Yeah, there is a small story that uh, if we just make the hard disk spin down and uh, place them there for years, the hard disk might be very probably to be broken. From some uh, information we learned that on the surface of a hard disk planet, there is a, a layer of, a very light layer of oil. So if we just uh, place the hard disk still there for a very long time, I don't know how to say that in English, the, the oil will, will gather to a drop of 
oil not uh, still a very tight layer. So in this case, if the hard disk rolling and the drop of oil hit the head of the hard disk, hit the head, then this hard disk will broken. So we have to run, we have to wake up the hard disk in period. So currently, we just wake up hard disk every month, do something, do some uh, data check, the hardware health check, and then we just make the hard disk sleep again. But now, this is open question net. If we make the hard disk power down, for the period between each wake up, because there is no operation, we think that the data should be safe, uh, the, 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 the hardware, the hard disk should be healthy. But I don't know. I don't know, I don't know whether it's true. I just placed some hard, hard disk there for several weeks and the power on again. Everything is okay, I don't know that. The, the hardware vendor tell me, don't worry. But we still need time to, to learn, to prove. Yeah, yeah. And uh, another story is for SSD. For SSD, we also need to wake up the SSD. We also need to read the data several months once. Otherwise, the electronic signal will decrease and decrease. Yeah. Okay, this is the, the, the whole team, the engineering team in Alibaba work on the whole code storage system, including the, the, the code, storage, code storage engine. Yeah, they're very young. Yeah, most of the guys that just work, just work one or two years, just graduated from university. Well, I'm old. Okay, also we need to thank, thank to the, the, the open source community. We work with community, that's why I mentioned it. Intel, this is Intel, ISA library team, people here, help us a lot for the performance improvement on Intel hardware. Yeah. Also, here is the list of the top 10 contributor to the Shipdog project. Yeah, some of them uh, are or were Alibaba, employee. Okay, finished? So we can discuss. What? How do you guard against losing the whole data center? Okay. There are two policy. One is we just do simple data duplication among different data center. Another one is uh, we do the initial code among different data center. Uh, back to this picture. Right now we just distributed the data pieces into different server. But we can also distribute the different data pieces into different data center. Because, because the I.O. latency is in hours, so it's okay for us just to gather in data from different data center and generate the original data block.
So you said that the uh, RESTful API is Swift compatible, so you could, in theory, have this connected to an OpenStack deployment? I guess so, but we don't work on that. Because yeah. we just support it. The, the interface here is very, very simple. Just uh, post, get, delete. It's very simple. And, uh, and we do not use OpenStack inside. We just use a very simple API to support uh, the command from upper line software. I'm not sure if you've already touched on this in the beginning of the presentation, but could you repeat what the packaging status of Sheepdog is in, in OpenSUSE in the revisions? And uh, also, um, how do you see um, Sheepdog in relation to other distributed storage systems like uh, ClusterFS, um, Ceph, obviously, like uh, what are the different use cases or the technical differences between those okay. systems? Sheepdog is originally designed to mix, to mix the virtual machine image storage and the virtual machine execution environment together. So a virtual machine can be run within a cluster, and the virtual machine image, for example, maybe it's a 200 mega gigabyte, the image itself distributed among the cluster. And the, when the virtual machine start, if, we, if the virtual machine needs some more block, just a read among the, the cluster. So the original design for Sheepdog is for I.O. on the virtualization environment for virtual machine, especially for KVM. Yeah. That's the big difference from the Ceph or ClusterFS. They are just for storage. Maybe they're, they're also good for virtualization storage, but uh, Sheepdog just designed in, for this kind of use case. But the reason for us to choose Sheepdog is because Sheepdog already has a distributed, consistent Hashi framework. And it also supports Erisha code. But we, we do not use it to storage any virtualization related I.O. But the software is very simple. It's around uh, three, no, no, it's around 30,000 lines of C code. It's very simple. And right now, no more than 40,000 lines of C code. It's, it's quite simple. A graduate student can understand the, the software within six months is very well. So that's why we, we use it. But because it is designed for virtualization, we do a lot of modification. Modif modify the code to support object storage. And add the rest for API, something like this. There are also some code to support uh, the, the virtualization, but we don't use that in our case. If uh, no more question, that's all the speech today. Thank you.